Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Recently, I showed you how to make this impressive marble seal embedded into a granite wall. Now, I'm going to show you how to make this foreboding massive entryway into the same dystopian building. I provided two documents for you to download so you can follow along. Their links are located in the video's description or project files. One is this wall base already angled in perspective, and the other is a stone tiled image that we'll use as the texture to wrap around the text's extrusions. Open your type tool and choose a font. I'm using Pasta Palazzo, which you can download at thefont.com. For this font, I'm using a point size of 350, smooth, and center text. Keep whatever color you have in the color box. Type out your text. To center it, click on your Move tool, press Control or Command A, and then click on the Align Vertical Centers icon. To delete the selection, press Control or Command plus D. I'd like to slide it down a bit, so I'll press and hold Shift as I slide it down. Control click or command click on the thumbnail to make a selection of the text. Now we can trash the text since we have its selection. Press Control or command J to cut and copy the selection from the base. Go to 3D and new 3D extrusion from selected layer. If 3D is grayed out or unavailable, it may be due to one or more of the reasons I listed in the video's description. If you see this window, click Yes. Go to View and Show. Make sure all the 3D modes are checked. Go to the Secondary Preview pane and open your list of views. Choose Top for now. Click on Layer 1, which is our text layer. There are five 3D modes. Rotate, Roll, Drag, Slide, and Scale. I covered them in detail in some of my past 3D tutorials. Choose Rotate and click above your text. Press and hold Shift as you drag up to rotate or pivot your text on its central horizontal axis. Use your secondary window to see that your text is facing you without showing its top or bottom extrusions. We need to rotate the camera so the ground plane is aligned with the perspective of the wall. To do this, go to the bottom left corner and move the widget around until the ground plane is aligned with the wall's perspective. It may take a while to get it just right, so take your time. Let's wrap the extrusions with the stone texture I provided. Open the document and go to 3D, New Mesh from Layer, and Postcard. Click on the Materials icon and double click on this icon to open its Properties panel. Click on the arrow to the right of the ball and click on the Gear icon. Choose New Material and type in Wall Texture. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Open back up your first document and click on the Materials icon. Click Extrusion Material and double click the icon to its left. Open your list of materials and choose Wall Texture. Notice the extrusions took on the texture we saved. Click on the Meshes icon and reduce the extrusion depth. I'll choose an amount of 200. Go to 3D and snap object to ground plane. Click on the drag icon and the yellow arrow of the Y axis of the widget. Move it up to slide the text on the surface of the ground plane. Click on the scale icon and click above the text to enlarge it. Click on your lights icon and the icon to the left of Infinite Light 1. If you don't see the grid lines or the light widget, press Control or Command H. 
Click on the handle of the widget and drag it straight up to as high as it will go. The color is white, the intensity is 90%, make sure shadow is checked, and increase the softness to between 15 to 20 percent. Let's make another light source to act as bounce light to brighten the extrusions a bit. Click on the new lights icon in the 3D panel and choose another infinite light. This is infinite light 2. Notice it immediately brightened the extrusions of the text however we don't want it to cast shadows so we'll uncheck shadows. Grab the handle of the light widget and pull it straight down. We'll reduce the intensity so it's not as bright. I'll make it 22 percent. We're ready to render our image. The amount of time it'll take to fully render it will depend on your computer's specifications and 3D settings. To help speed it up, go to Edit, Preferences, and 3D. In Ray Tracer, change the high quality threshold to 3 or 4 to speed up the rendering time. But keep in mind, the lower the number, the noisier your final image will be. Also, make sure Photoshop is using enough VRAM for 3D. I won't suggest an amount since it could affect other applications in your computer. Check with Adobe or your computer's manufacturer for recommendations. Click on the render icon at the lower right of the properties panel. Remember it could take anywhere from 10 minutes to a few hours. Once it's fully rendered, we can close the properties panel. Let's add some dramatic lighting to the wall. Click on the background thumbnail to make the layer active. Go to Filter, Render, and Lighting Effects. Go to the bottom left corner, highlight the zoom percentage, and type in 30. Then press Enter or Return. If you don't see the light guides, press Ctrl or Command H. By rotating this small widget, you can adjust the intensity of the hotspot. You can adjust the scale length, the width, and the hotspot by dragging them in or out when you see the words. You can move the entire light by clicking inside and moving it. Ultimately, I made the intensity 14, the hotspot 73, the exposure 0, the gloss and metallic 100, and the ambiance 42. When you're happy with the lighting, click OK. Press Ctrl or Command 0 to fit the image onto your screen. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.